Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today we're going to do a SketchUp tutorial. Uh, we've done one in the past, let me show you here. Uh, several months back we did uh, how Learn SketchUp in 20 minutes, it's a complete SketchUp uh, tutorial of a coffee table. And this was a pretty big success. Everybody seemed to like it and had asked for some more SketchUp videos, so we decided to do that. And this is today's going to be step two in the process. Um, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth today, I think, than we did then. If you haven't seen this video, it might be a good idea to watch it because in this video, I show you how to go and get SketchUp directly from SketchUp itself and download it and put a copy of it on your computer. So I show you exactly where to click, where to research, or you know where to, where to type in to get that. And so it might be a good idea to see this first, but if you're already familiar with it and you have it on your computer, that wouldn't be necessary. But I will put a link to this video down in the description. I want to talk a little bit about a company who I personally asked if they would sponsor us. The company is MagSwitch. I've been approached a hundred times in the last two years from tool companies trying to get me to take on a sponsorship. I've declined them all because their tools were mostly just mediocre. MagSwitch takes tools to a whole new level. They make your work faster, they make it more accurately, and most importantly, they make it safer. There's a link in the description below that gets you 10% off and you'll be helping support our channel. And these things are awesome times too when you discover you can store them literally anywhere. All right, we're gonna start by opening SketchUp. I do have two copies of SketchUp on my computer. I have the SketchUp Pro, which we pay for since we make and actually sell plans. Uh, you need to buy the licensed version if you're gonna do that. But if you're just building something for yourself, then just use the free version of SketchUp, and that's SketchUp 2017, which is the one I have. And we'll just click there to start using it. And we're gonna do basically the same thing in this video that I did in my first video. Um, so I've been an educator for a long time. Uh, I teach uh, organic chemistry. I've taught for many years, probably almost 10 years at the university level. And I started out tutoring and then ended up teaching and quite a uh, few different types of chemistry, but I focused mainly on organic. And so I definitely uh, have a firm belief in one particular teaching method, and that is to um, jump right in and start. So I mentioned in the earlier video that I could go through and I could tell you what each of these tools means and uh, that would just be a lot of data for you to remember and it probably wouldn't stick and probably wouldn't go to your long-term memory. The best way to learn what each of these things do is to just start building something and I'm going to do that for you. I'm just going to start building something and I'm going to tell you each time I do something I'm going to tell you how to do it and you're going to see it. Now the first time you see me do it you're not going to be able to commit that to your long-term memory and that's okay. But as time goes on, even over the course of this video, you'll see me do it 10 times, 15 times, 20 times, and then it's gonna make sense. It's gonna become second nature because you're gonna learn by repetition. And it's gonna be a lot more fun because you're just jumping right into a project as opposed to spending time learning all these individual things which uh, almost have no meaning to you yet at this point. And another thing that I want to point out, and this is critical, um, and, I'll, and I'll pause occasionally throughout the video to talk to you. I'm going to be entering measurements a lot, and I want you to focus on right here. Hopefully you can see my cursor moving around there. It says measurements. And when I enter measurements, they're going to appear over here in this window. You're going to see me entering measurements, and my, my uh, pieces are just going to spontaneously change shape. But if you look down here, and I'm going to point you to this a number of times throughout the video, you can see where and how I enter the measurements. I'm going to type them in and they'll appear down here. And that's good to know because if I want something that's 36 inches wide, I'll click on it and I'll type 36 enter. And as I'm typing 36, the number is appearing down here. And I do have this set up in inches for woodworking. Uh, if you want to use a metric system, you can use that too. You'll set it up that way and you might type in millimeters, for example. Uh, but basically this is a good area to keep a focus on and I'll talk about this frequently. And when I do use some of these tools, I'll probably do the shortcut. If I want to move something, I could come up here to the move tool and I could grab it and I could do a move or I can just simply click uh, M for move tool. That turns into the move tool and I'll show you that it looks like that. So that'll kind of make things a little bit easier as we go along and, and help out your learning process. Okay, so we're just gonna jump right into it. Today I'm gonna build a workbench. This is gonna be a two by four workbench. Workbench has got a two by four top and the legs will make them out of four by fours. This is basic material that you can go and pick up from your local big box store, something like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or, or whatever you might have in your area. And it's a really inexpensive way to build a good quality 
workbench. And a woodworking bench is kind of you know essential to, to doing a lot of types of woodworking. So I figured this would be a good project that maybe a lot of you are interested in. And it contains a lot of building techniques that are important to have. So we're going to start with that. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is probably to draw the legs. So let's take a look at the at the field here. I can, uh, if I were to click the, hold down the uh, scroll wheel, I can kind of move this around. This is called the orbit tool. So we can kind of get an orbital view of what's going on. Um, but what we need to do is uh, start with a leg. So I'm going to put a, a square down here, or a rectangle. So we're going to click R for rectangle tool. And you can see there's a shape of a box there, and it looks like that tool right there. So I'm going to click in the corner. You can see if I hover right to the corner, if it, at some point the, you can see the word origin pops up. That's how I know I'm in the, in the corner. So I'll do a left click once with the mouse, and I'll just pull it out this way. Now I'm going to use a 4x4 four four for the leg. So now is that time I want you to go down and look at the dimensions box. You see these dimensions are huge, but I want my leg to be a 4x4 four four leg, which as we know is 3.5 by 3.5. So I'm going to type in 3.5. You see that pop up down there? And then comma, because it's 3.5 in one dimension. And then 3.5 again, because it's 3.5 in the other dimension. And then hit enter. And there it is. Now, I'm still in the rectangle tool, which I don't want to be in the rectangle tool, so I'm going to press spacebar to get out of it. Now I'm going to zoom in by scrolling the mouse wheel forward, and that is the footprint of our 4x4. Now let's say I want my workbench to be 34 inches tall. Maybe I want the leg to come right to the top of it. So I'm going to click there, and I can stretch this thing up. The way to do that is to use the push-pull tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click P, for push pull and you see how the tool appeared and look it looks just like that tool and if you hover over it you can see that's what pops up push pull all right so with that tool active i'll click here just once and let go just a left click it's not a click and drag just click and let go and i'm going to move this upward well i want it to be a specific height now if you look down in the measurement box you can see as i'm going down the measurements getting smaller as i go up the measurements getting bigger I can just stop there for a minute and I'll type in the number 34. And then if I hit enter, it makes it 34 inches tall. Now I'm still in the push pull tool, so I need to get out of that tool, so I'll press spacebar. Now I'm going to scroll out with my mouse so I can look at the whole leg. Okay, so now what we've done is we've drawn all of the dimensions that are required for this to be a leg, but it's not yet a leg, it's not yet a component. Meaning, if I were to draw another line somewhere else, anywhere else, it would actually think that I'm trying to attach it or that it's a part of this leg, and so it would interfere. So once I draw a piece, no matter what that piece is, once I'm done drawing a piece, I have to make that piece a component. The way to do that is to use, put your mouse over it and triple click. One, two, three. That's a triple click. And now I can do a right click, and I have a menu that pops up, and I see make component. I'll click that, that makes it a component. If I wanted, you can see I can even give a definition or a name to this component. I don't really care. We'll let it be called component 1. Then I'll click create. Now this leg is its own unique component. And that's what's really important. The leg is its own unique component. Now I can go ahead and draw something else. But I do have one leg, but of course a table needs four. So if this leg is here, Maybe my workbench is about six feet long this way, and maybe it's about two feet wide this way, and you know, 34 inches tall this way. So this leg is here. I know I'm going to need a leg over here. So the best way to do that, don't pay any attention to that. That wasn't my phone dinging. All right, so the best way to do that is for me to copy this leg over to there. So to copy and put it over there, I'm going to have to move it over there. So I'm going to click, click M for move. Just type the letter M, and look what comes up, that shape. And this is what we talked about in the beginning. And look, it kind of, it's that shape right there. And if I hover over that shape, you can see that's the Move tool. So that's just a shortcut. I could come up here and I could click that and be in the Move tool, or I can just remember some of these shortcuts. M is for Move. So now I'm going to go over to my, my, uh, my piece here. I'm just going to click it once. That's selected it. I'm not going to click and drag. Just click and select it. And I'm going to start moving it. Now I want to move it straight down this line. Do You see this is the green axis of our grid here. But it's hard to get it exactly straight. You see how it likes to go all over the place? But I want this thing to move exactly 
oh, I don't know, if I want it to be 24 inches down and my piece is three and a half inches thick, 24 minus three and a half, means I gotta move it down by 20 and a half inches. But I wanna get it exactly along here. I don't want my leg to be over here. I want this thing to be square. So check this out. I have these arrow keys, right? So if I press the left arrow key, that holds it on the green axis. It only goes. So even if my mouse is close, it stays on the green axis. If my mouse is over here, it stays on the green axis. If my mouse is over here, it stays on the green axis. That's pretty cool. If I press the up arrow key, this should make sense to you. It's only gonna go up and down. That's the blue axis. If I press the right arrow key, it's only gonna go this way. That's the red axis. That's the way to keep a piece going straight on the axis that you want. So I'm going to go back to the left arrow because that's the green axis the way I want it. Now I know I've got to move it down 20 and a half inches. I just did that math. But I don't just move it 20 and a half and stop because then all I will have succeeded in doing is moving the leg. I want to copy the leg. So what I do is as I start moving the leg down there, but before I, but before I get it to where I want it, I'm going to press the control key. The control key makes a copy. And there it is, there's our copy, cool. So now I wanna get this in position, and now I want you to go down and look in the measurement box. It says distance now. This It's asking me what distance that I want this away from the first leg, and we've calculated 20.5. So I'm gonna type in 20.5. Did you see that appear in the lower right-hand box? Distance, 20.5, and then hit enter, and there it is. It moved it exactly 20.5 inches over, which keeps these two pieces 24 inches apart. Now I'm in the move tool, and I don't want to be in the move tool. Remember to get out of a tool, I press the space bar. And now I want to do one more operation, or perform one more operation on this. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mortise in here, and a mortise in the side. Also here a mortise there and a mortise there. These mortises need to face each other and these two outer mortises need to face down the table this way. So I, but I really only want to take the time to put the mortise in one leg. So these legs are kind of intertwined. They, whatever I do to one leg is gonna do to the other because it's a copy of this one. So ideally I would want to put, make this as the mirror image of that. So here's how you do that. You right click on that leg and then you're going to say flip along and I'm going to say components green. So I'm flipping this leg upon the green axis. Now you don't see anything happen yet, but what it did is it made this leg as the mirror image of this one. So now if I were to put a mortise on this face, a mortise would appear on this face as well. Or if I were to put a mortise on this face, one would appear on the po opposing face over here because we've created the mirror image. Don't forget that when we move a component, we want to right click it like this and then flip it along whatever axis we moved it along. In this case, we know we moved it on the green axis, so we want to flip it on the green axis. All right, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to zoom out here. Now I've got these two legs, and now I want a pair of legs over here. So guess what? I'm going to move them as a pair over here, and then I'm going to flip them along the red axis. So let's see how we're going to move them. First thing I have to do is select them. Let's talk about the select tool for just a quick second. If I'm over here, for if, I, if I click and drag from left to right, I'm sorry, from right to left, I just barely have to grab a piece of what's happening and it actually grabs the whole thing. On the other hand, if I click and drag from left to right, if I just grab a piece, nothing happens. I've got to grab the whole thing. So look at this. This would be a way for me to isolate and grab just one leg. So you see here, I fully grabbed the leg on the left, but not the one on the right. So if I let go, only the leg on the left is selected. In the future, that will become important. But for now, let's just know that we want to grab both legs because we want to copy them both down here. So I'm just going to do this. Now they're selected. Now the first step was to move. Do you remember that? And you remember how to get the move tool? We type M, M for move, and it appears, the move tool. Now we want to click on it and that moves it. Just click and let go. And we can see. See, it moves it. We want it to come this way, right? We want it to come right along the red axis. It's hard for me to, to, to pull it straight on the red axis because my mouse tends to wander. And, you know, it could go any which way. Remember, if we want it to go down just one specific axis, if we can't remember what's what, it's okay because you can keep pressing those arrow keys and get to where you want. So the left arrow key moves it on the green axis. The up is the most obvious because that moves it up and down on the blue axis and the right arrow key 
moves it on the red axis, which is down here to the right like we want. So I'm going to take it part way down to where I want, but remember, if I take it all the way to where I want and then type in my numbers, all I will have succeeded in is moving it, but I want to copy it. So as I start going that way, I want to press the control key like that, and that copies it. And now as I'm working my way down here, maybe I decide I want them 48 inches apart. So I get some distance towards the way I want. I'll type in the number 48. Look in the lower right-hand box again. I'm going to type it in. It, the box says distance, and I'm going to type it in now, 48. So I want it 48 inches away, and I'm going to hit the Enter key, Enter. There it is. Now it's 48 inches away. So I'm still in the Move tool. I want to get out of the Move tool, so I'm going to press the space bar. I'm out of the move tool. Remember the last thing we have to do is we have to flip the orientation to make these guys the mirror image of these. Let's think about this. If I didn't, if I put a mortise here, you know, for the rail that goes across, that mortise would appear here, but that's not in the right spot. We want the mortises to face each other. So I have to flip this, okay? So the way to flip it is with them selected, they're still selected, right click on it and we'll click uh, flip along, there it is the red direction because I moved it on the red direction so flip along the red direction and it's done so there it is so we've built the legs for our table and that's it it's real straightforward um, we can take a look at them this is the orbit tool that I'm in and I'm getting this by holding down the scroll wheel see the scroll wheel scrolls in and out and if I press the scroll wheel down, I can orbit, you know, like a, a like I'm a satellite orbiting around the, the the planet table. So I'm orbiting around and I'm looking at it from from space, from some spatial uh, dimension up above. That looks pretty good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in rails. Okay, so for the rails, I think I want to use a four by four. I've got four by four legs and. 4x4 four four rails would look good. It'll give the bench a stout look. It'll add a little bit of extra weight to it. And uh, so I think we're going to do that. It'll also be bigger, a little bit meatier, so it'll be easier for us to put tenons into it. All right, so what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is, we, so we got to get a rail from here to here. And, of course, from there to there. And the other side, and the other side. Because rails are going to go all the way around. So I've got to make a decision on how high up I want the rails also. Uh, so to start with, I think the most logical thing to do would be to draw a rectangle here which would be a square of course and then just pull it all the way over to be flush with this edge so if you can remember how we do a rectangle we're going to type the letter R that's the rectangle tool I'll start at this corner I'll click the button once and then we'll drag it out like that now, I don't really know what size that is but you can look down in the dimensions and you can actually see down in the dimensions the size is right it says three and a half comma three and a half if it weren't right I would just type it in like this, 3.5 comma 3.5. I can also do three and, three and a half comma three and a half, it's the same thing. I'll hit enter and that solidifies it there as our rectangle. Now I've got to pull it from there to here. I can't do it with this tool, so I can get out of this tool or I could go directly to the tool that I need, in which case I'll do that. So I'm gonna do P for push, that's the push pull tool. I will click that surface and I will drag it over to here. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's happening here. So I'm dragging this over here. I want it to be perfect with that edge. And watch what happens as my tool gets right to this corner. It, you see how that? Um, there's a little purple dot there. It says on edge in component. That sort of snaps it to that corner. If I were to go this way, I could do the same thing. I could snap it to that corner. So we can see how it snaps to that corner just perfectly for us. So we'll do that. We'll click the button again, and there it is. That locks it in place. Now let's get rid of the push-pull tool. Remember to do that, we want to press the space bar. Okay, so now we have just drawn a new component, but it's not yet identified as a component. So to identify it as a component, we have to triple click. So I'll do that. That's a triple click. And then I can do a right click on it, and I can go down to make a component. But maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I'll do a triple click, whoops, <laughs> triple click and press the letter G. That's a shortcut to making a component. I could go over here and I could click create, but create's already highlighted, so I could just hit the enter key. So that's a fast way to make a component. Triple click, the letter G, and enter. And that's just a really quick way to do it. All right, so now we have a component. 
Now let's take a look at that guy. Looks good to me, but it's not in the right location. We want, I, let's say I want these rails to be 12 inches up from the top of the rail, uh, 12 inches up off of the bottom here. So here's how I would do that. I need to move it up, obviously. So for the tool to move, I'm gonna press M for the move tool. I will click it once. I'm gonna click on the edge here, click it once, and then I'm just gonna raise and lower. Now I'm not, I didn't do a click in drag I just did a, a click and let go and I raise it up but see look what's happening I can put it any way I want we don't want that remember let's see what that happens if I push the left arrow key ah, the left arrow key is moving it that way we knew that and the up arrow key that's the one we want that's the one that's going to keep it on the blue axis so we're going to go up so I'm just going to move it up to some amount I'm just going to type in 12 and enter and that moves the piece up 12 inches exactly which is what we're looking for all right, so in looking at this piece, what does it look like I've done? Does it, if this is 34, does that look like that's up about 12 inches? Sometimes you're not sure if you typed in the right number or if I've clicked it up in just the right spot in order to move it. But here's a quick way to check it. Let me zoom in here. And if we look up at the top, we see this tool here. That's a tape measure tool. I can also press T to get that tape measure tool. So if I click down here at this edge and it goes straight up, I can see that right there is 12 inches, and I actually wanted that to be the top. All the way up here, it's actually at, whoops, right there, 15 and a half inches. So the piece is actually too high. I did move it up too high. I moved it up by 12, and it looks like that moved it from the bottom to the bottom, which, which is 12. So I would suggest that occasionally, if you're not sure if your measurement worked, use the tape measure tool and see if that worked. And if not, it's really no problem to move it. So let's get out of the tape measure tool. We're going to press the space bar. And we want to move this back down. Now we do know how much we want to move it down by. We want to move it back down by three and a half inches. So I'll click the move tool. I'll click it. And now it's going to be moving up and down. I'll use the up arrow key so that I can lock it into this axis. And I'm going to start downward and I'm going to do 3.5 enter. And I believe that moved it back down exactly the amount that I wanted it to. But here again, let's just check and make sure. So I need to get out of the move tool. So I'm going to press the space bar and I need to use the tape measure tool. I can click here or I can just type T and we'll click there at the corner and I'll bring it to here and there it is. It is 12 inches. So now it is just the way we want it. So that's great. So let's get out of the tape measure tool. And now what we need to do, we have this rail done. We need to copy this rail over to there. So this is something we've done before. We take a piece, we start moving it, and we copy it over. Let's see if you can remember the steps as we go through it here. The first thing we'll do is we'll start to move it. So we're going to click M for the move tool. And we're going to click here to start moving it. And I need to make sure that I move it in this direction. And remember, this isn't a click drag. I just clicked it and let go of the mouse. So I want to move it in this direction, so I want to lock it into that axis. So let's try the left arrow key. If we can remember, the left arrow key is the green axis. That's exactly where we want it. Now we're going to end up wanting it over here, if that makes sense. And that should be about 20 and a half inches over, which is the same way that we did with the first one. But let's start getting it over there. And I don't want to just put it 20 and a half and and type it in and click it there because all I will have done is moved it. Remember, we're trying to copy it. So we're going to go part way. I'm going to hit the control key and that copies it. Then we're going to go ahead and move it over, get it real close to where we think it needs to go. And then I'm going to type in a number. So look in the lower right hand corner again where it says distance. I'm going to type 20.5 and that just so happens to be the same amount that I moved the legs over. Hit enter and there it is. We can see it's lined up just right. So 20.5. Okay, so now if you can remember, what we have to do is we have to flip this component. We want to do that because whatever I do to this one, I want to make sure it happens to that one. So if I were to put a tenon in this, I, remember this is going to have to have probably a tenon or something to connect here. I want the tenon to be the same here. If I were to offset this tenon to the left, then I would want this tenon to be offset to the right so we have some sort of symmetry. All right, so let's get out of the move tool, that space bar. Let's click this tool. I'm sorry, click this, uh, this component. We're going to right click, we're going to go down to flip along, and we're going to flip this along the green axis. So just get used to that flipping. Whenever you create something on one side and you move it uh, to make a copy of it, make sure you flip it along that axis. That way, when you, whatever you do to one, it does to the other. Okay, so that's done. Now let's take a look at 
the side rails, the ones that go from here to here. So it's always good to take and be comfortable with moving uh, your piece around using the orbit tool. Zoom in and out, you know, get it just where you want it. And once you're comfortable with that, you, know, you always orient your piece in such a way that you can really see and get a feel for what's going on. You're working in three-dimensional space, but of course your perspective is just on a flat two-dimensional screen. So it's something you kind of have to get used to. It doesn't take long. It becomes intuitive uh, pretty quickly, and it's not too tough. All right, so I'm just going to orient this about right there, and that's a good place for me to see, for me to draw a rectangle here, and then pull it over to here. All right, so let's start with that. We're going to need the rectangle tool, which is R. I'm going to start right in that corner, and I'm going to start pulling it out to this way. And I'm going to type in my dimension, 3.5, comma, 3.5, enter. There it is. Now I need to pull it over to here. So I'm going to switch to the push-pull tool by typing P. I don't have to get out of the previous tool first if I don't want to. Now I'll click here, one click, and I'll start moving my mouse this direction. And you'll see it'll snap to that edge. And then I'll click there, and that puts it there. So it's all set. Now I have to make it a component. Don't forget, every time you draw a new piece, whatever the piece may be, I've completed the drawing now, I've made it a three-dimensional piece, I have to make it a component. We're going to try our shortcut. <clears throat> Let's get out of this tool. I'll press the space bar. And then we're going to do triple click. We're going to do G. And we're going to do Enter. Now it's a component. All right, so now I want to move it up 12 inches. So I'm going to do the Move tool, click it, and whoops, there we go. We're going to go up and down, but I'm going to need to use the uh, arrow keys because it's hard for me to keep it constrained in here exactly like I want it. So it's the up arrow, and that brings it up and down. And so I made a mistake before of doing 12, which that moved the bottom of it up 12. So in this case, I think I'll just move it up 8.5. So 8.5, enter, and that was it. That locks it on evenly with that piece. So that makes sense. Okay, good. So we have this one, and now I want to move that over here. I want to copy this rail. Let me get out of this tool by pressing the space bar. I want to copy this rail over to here. So it's going to be the same procedure that we did over here. We're going to use the Move tool. Click it, and we're going to start moving it this direction. Now I want to make sure I can stay in this direction, so let's try the arrow keys. Left arrow key, that's not the right way. We know up and down is not the right way. Right arrow key. Finally, we're doing something with the right arrow key, the, moving something in the red axis. So we're going to move it over to here. So as I get part way, I'm going to need to click Control. That copies it. And I want to take it all the way over here, which should be 48 inches away. 48, Enter, and there it is. All right, so there's one last thing to do. Let me press the space bar to get out of that tool. Last thing to do is to right click on it and flip it along the red axis and there we go so there's the rails I haven't put in the uh, tenons on the end of the rails and I haven't put in the mortises in the legs yet we will come back and do that but let's take a look at what we've got so that looks pretty good it's starting to look like a table there okay so let's tackle those mortise and tenons next We'll zoom in here. What we're going to need to do is I'm going to need to hi highlight some stuff so that I can still see it, and I'm going to need to block other things. All right, so I'm going to go to View, and I am going to go to Component Edit. This is going to allow me to edit just one component. It makes it real easy. And in order to do this, I want to have the Hide Rest of Model feature clicked. So now if I go into a component, or let's go take a look. I'll show you what happened. As you see, now it's clicked. It's got a check mark by it, which is what we want. All right. So now if I go into a component to do work on it, it's going to hide or kind of fade out the rest of the rest of the model to, to where we can't see it. And the way to get into a component is to double click it. So let's look take a look at this uh, this rail for example. I'm going to start by putting a tenon on the end of this rail. All right. So to get into the component to put a tenon on it, I double click it. So here it is. So I've double clicked it. As soon as I double clicked it, you notice it hid the rest of the model. You might also notice that it didn't necessarily hide this piece, but it grayed it out. That's because these two pieces are connected. Um, it's like Einstein's spooky action at a distance there, huh? They're, uh, they're intertwined somehow. Whatever I do to this one, it's also going to happen to this one. Whatever happens here, this guy knows about it. Same thing happens. It's kind of cool. 
Uh, but it makes our, makes our work easier because then I'm not going to have to put in four tenons. I'm just going to put one on this side. It appears here. I'll put one on that side and it'll appear there. Okay, so we're going to do some new tools. So let me zoom in just a little bit here. So I think I want to have a tenon that's um, somewhere in the middle here. We'll just make it real easy for us. We're going to maybe come three quarters of an inch in from each edge and have the tenon come straight out to us like that. So I'm going to use the offset tool. So I'm going to, if you can follow my cursor up here, this is the offset tool. So I'm hovering over it and you can see it says offset. Uh, so the, the, the letter, the shortcut for offset is F. So offset F. I know that seems silly, but that's what it is. So I can click this tool to do it. And there's what it looks like. And as I hover over here, you can see it knows I'm going to do something here. I haven't pushed any buttons. I'm just hovering. And so it knows I'm going to do something with this edge. And you can see that I'm, it's kind of walking the, the, the dot around the edge. So I'll just start somewhere here. I'm going to click my left mouse button once. And I'm going to start moving in. And this is going to be my tenon. But I want this to come a certain distance in. This is where the offset tool comes in handy. What I'm doing is I'm drawing a rectangle, a square in this case, uh, which is offset from that outer edge by a certain amount. And I want to type in that amount now. So I'm going to start it in here and look in the lower right hand corner of that box down there where it says distance. I'm going to do 0.75, that's three quarters of an inch, and enter. Now I have created a square within the bigger square there that's 0.75 of an inch or three quarters of an inch in from each edge. And that's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to click the space bar to get out of that tool. Oops. So what I did is I accidentally clicked off of the component which took me out of it. That's not a big deal at all. Watch. I'm just going to double click. That puts me right back into the component. No big deal. All right. So I want to pull this out to me. So remember, that's just P, the push pull tool. I grab it and I want to pull it out. Now, how big do I want that tenon to be? Um, probably this big, right? No, I don't think so. So we're going to pull this out two inches. I hit type the number two and enter. And look what happened. It put a tin in here and it put a tin in here. So that's fantastic. That's exactly what I was looking for. Now let's do the same to the other side. I'm going to get out of this tool here and we're going to flip this around to the other side. This is, how it, this is why it might help to get uh, comfortable with this tool. So I'm still in this component, so I'm not going to put the tin in over here. Do you know how I know I'm still in this component? It's because this is the one that has the grid around it. So I might as well just keep working here because whatever I do here, it'll happen over here. I could put it here and of course it'll happen over here, but I'm already in this component. But let's say I make a mistake and I click somewhere other than this component like here. I click up. It's taken me out of the component. No big deal. Remember to get back into a component, you double click on the component. So double click. That puts me back into the component. So that works great. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Let me get a little closer here and we'll take a look at this. So I want the offset tool because I want, now I could just draw a rectangle in here. And uh, so I keep saying rectangle, but you do need to know that uh, every square is in fact a rectangle. It has four right angles, but not every rectangle is a square. So I can use the word rectangle for square. So just, I'm hoping that doesn't confuse anybody out there. I don't know how many of you guys uh, don't like that. So <laughs> sorry. All right. So. I could just draw a rectangle in here if I wanted to, um, but then I have to get a position just right, you know, three quarters of an inch down from here, three quarters of an inch over, three quarters of an inch up. That might be a little tedious. That's why we use the offset tool. It makes it really easy. It's, it's a way to put like a smaller rectangle inside of a bigger one, you know, or a smaller square inside of a bigger one, but have it uniformly distanced all the way around from the edges. So that's the reason for it. So F for offset tool. And we'll click my left mouse click button once and I'll start moving it in. And you can see that. And I'm going to type in 0.75. You can see that happened in the lower right hand corner, 0.75 and enter. And there it is. All right, now I'm going to do the push pull tool, P for push pull. And I'm going to click there and I'm going to start dragging this out to us. I want the tenon to come out the same amount as the other tenon. So I'm going to type 2, enter. So the tenon is coming out 2 inches. Let me get out of this tool. That's space bar. And let's take a look. There it is. We've got our tenons on both sides. That was extremely easy to put a tenon on. No problem. Okay, so now I'm going to click over here somewhere to get out of this component. Just a single click does it. All right, so 
we know we have our tenons on the long rails. Now we need to put our tenons on the short rails. Now up here in the view, if you take a look, of course we're still in the hide the rest of the model for editing a component. So we're just going to stay in it for a few more minutes and, and get this other work done. So I'm going to double click here. Now that puts us in this component, real simple. There's this short rail and there's his counterpart over there. And this is the one that we know we're working on because this is the one with the grid around it. Hopefully you can see that grid there. All right, so we're gonna come over here, same procedure, F for offset, get close, click the button, move it in, 0.75, enter. There it is, push pull tool, I'll grab the center part, pull it out, two inches, enter. Real simple, look at that. Let me hit the space bar to get out of the tool. I'm gonna spin this around. There we go, and remember, I'm still in this component because it's the one with the grid, so let's just put the other tenon over here. F for offset, get there, click, move it in, 0.75, enter. That puts it there. P for the push pull tool. And whoop, oh, I'll look at that. I made a mistake, didn't I? I need to push pull push pull this part. There we go. So push pull this part, two, enter, and there it is. And then hit space bar to get out of that tool. And there it is. Now those guys are done. So that was pretty quick. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, now I'm gonna click out of the component. So now our tenons are done all the way around. That's pretty neat. So now we have to put our mortises in. So let's see how we'll do that. What I'm going to do is I think I'll start on this leg right here and I'm going to get into this leg to work on it. So whenever you have a component already done, to go and do work on just that, you have to double click to get into the component. Since we still have that hide the component or hide the rest of the model feature checked, I just go right into this component. And there it is, we're into the component. Now the problem is, is I don't really know where the mortise is, do I? Well, let's think about it. I probably do know where the mortise is because I know my rail is 12 inches up at the top. So let's see if we can figure this out. We're gonna put some guidelines in to help us out, okay? So the guidelines are gonna use this tape measure tool. So let's type T for tape measure tool. I'm gonna go to the bottom, click, and I'm gonna move up, and I'm gonna go up, up 12 inches here and I and I'm just going to type it in so if you look in the lower right hand corner in that box I'm going to type 12 enter that puts a guideline at 12 inches pretty cool now I know my 4x4 is um, three and a half inches wide so I'm going to click here and I'll move up oh, I made a mistake there hang on let me get rid of that okay click on there and I'll move another guideline up eight and a half 8.5 enter so that puts my second guideline right there. Now let's zoom in just a little bit closer to what's happening here. Okay, so these to this guideline here and this guideline here, that's like the top and bottom of my rail. Now I do know that my tenon comes down three quarters of an inch from here and comes up three quarters of an inch from here. So let's put a second set of guidelines in. So I'll start here and you see if, I, if I'm right on the point a little red dot appears and it says online. So I'll click there, I'll go down three quarters of an inch. That's 0.75, enter. And let's put one here going up. Click it, move it up, 0.75, enter. So this is gonna define the top and the bottom of my mortise. Now I know that the rail is just exactly the same width here, right? So the tenon comes in three quarters of an inch from this edge and three quarters of an inch from this edge. That's what the offset tool did for us on the tenon. So the same will be for the mortise. I'll click this edge, I'll move it in, 0.75, enter. I'll do the same thing here. I'll click it there, move it in, 0.75, enter. Cool. All right, so that's it. This inner area here is what's going to be our mortise. All right, so I have to draw a rectangle. So let me do R for the rectangle tool and I'll come up to this corner and it says intersection. So wherever else I am, there's nothing popping up, but when I get right to the corner, it tells me that I'm at the intersection. So I'll click there and I'll move it out to this corner and click again. And there, I've drawn a rectangle. Now let's push, do the push pull tool and I'm clicking it. Now mortises go in, they don't come out. So I wanna push the mortise, start pushing it inward and then I have to decide how much I want it in. Remember the tenon came out two inches so I'm gonna push the mortise in by two inches. Two, enter. 
there it is. That mortise is done. And look at this. It did a mortise here and it did a mortise here. And they're in the, both in the right spot because we took the time to flip this to get the mirror image of that. All right, let me get out of this tool by hitting the space bar. And now all these guidelines are going to be confusing because I'm going to have to go and do the side ones. So let's get rid of these guides. If I can do edit and delete guides, or I could have pushed control E, but edit, delete guides. I can't remember all the shortcuts. So, all right, so I'm going to use my orbit tool. I'm going to come around to this side now. And I need to get a little closer to here. Okay, so I need to put my same set of guides in here because I need my other mortise on this side because that mortise has to go between these two guys. Okay, all right, so let's do T for tape measure. We'll start down here. We'll go up 12 inches, 12, enter, and we'll do another one that goes up eight and a half. Well, let's say I didn't, I couldn't do the math to, from 12 to see how far down this came. That's no problem. I could just start here and go down 3.5 that'd be the same as going up. So there's, there, there's that one and there's that one. Okay, now we have those set. Now I need to do my ones for my mortise itself. That's up by 0.75, there it is. And here we come down by 0.75, enter, there we go. Let's get a little closer and we'll go there and move over 0.75. Try not get, to get too confused with all the lines that are popping up. It's looking confusing because we do have a grid around this around this box. You see, this this dotted line here is the grid around the around this uh, around this component, telling us that we're in this component. So hopefully you can stay focused just in this area. All right, now here on the edge, click it and move that over by 0.75. Enter. All right, there's going to be our little box right there for our mortise. I'm going to need to use the rectangle tool. So I typed R. We're going to grab here. We're going to pull down and click there. All right, now the push-pull tool, we'll click it, and we'll push that in by two inches and enter. All right, so now I do have, let me get out of this tool, and let me get edit, delete the guides, so we can see what's happening. Now I have mortises on the sides, and I have mortises on the fronts and backs. We do have to clean up this mortise, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is clean up this mortise, and what happened when this mortise here got pushed in, let's zoom in and we'll take a look. Oh, that was too far. Let me zoom back out here. All right, so what it did is it created an artifact. It, by pushing in, it kind of pushed this film over to here, which doesn't really belong. You see, we should be able to clearly see through this mortise and out the other one because they both kind of overlap each other just a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how we fix that. What we need to do is, so there isn't, a line here doesn't really exist because this got pushed in. And the same thing over here, the line right here doesn't really exist because that got pushed in. So I'm just gonna draw those two lines and then we're gonna delete this stuff and it'll make sense. I know this seems awkward, but you'll get used to it as you do mortises. If your mortises overlap like these do, you have to get rid of the artifact, the stuff that's kind of in between. If your mortises don't overlap, it's not a problem. In fact, a lot of times when you do things, you don't really want your mortises to overlap. But for a big bench like this with big mortises, with big rails, and I wanted them centered, they're gonna overlap. All right, so let's do that. So we're just gonna do, click L. L is actually gonna draw a line for us. And I'm gonna come right here to this point, and that's the end point. I'm gonna click a line and come straight down to there and click, and that put a line there for us. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Let me zoom in, click there, and I'm gonna come straight down and click there. So that's the line. All right, I'm gonna get out of that tool. Now I'm gonna click this piece and I'm gonna delete it. I'm going to click this piece and delete it. And I'm going to click this piece and delete it. And then I have to delete these extra lines, which were part of the artifact from that mortise getting pushed through. It's going to make sense in just a second here, I hope. Let's move to this side and take a look. Yep, good, okay. So this line, delete it, or that, that wall, sorry. There we go, and there we go, and there we go. And then there's some lines on the top that don't belong. Let's take a look at those. I'll click those. And remember, these are just artifacts from pushing that mortise in and having it overlap. 
Okay, so let's see if this is making any more sense now that I've done that. Uh, so this might seem confusing, but if you follow what I just did and you do it yourself a couple of times, it will make sense. All right, so there it is. Now you can see this mortise pushes into here, okay? And this mortise pushes into here. So the tenon actually comes to here, and that tenon comes to there. So these two tenons are kind of overlapping on each other's space, right? So we don't really like that, um, but we can fix that. Let me get back out here. Right. Sometimes if you zoom in uh, too close when you're into the piece, it messes up. Okay, so there it is. So we've put those in, and see, but the magic of creating these uh, individual legs and moving over here and then flipping them on the green axis and then moving the pair over here and flipping it on the red axis means that we have, by putting the mortises in one on the two sides, it has put them in all of the legs. So you should be able to see that. The mortises are in all of them now officially. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and that puts those back in place. And we'll see if we can take a look at one. I'll move one of the rails out of the way so you can see. We'll click the Move tool, and I'll click this. I'll move it in the red direction. And you can see that tenon fits right into the mortise. That's exactly what we're looking for, right? All right, good. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fix those tenons. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I want to get to the point where I get rid of our component edit. I want to uncheck that. All right, and then I want to just look at the rails. I don't want to um, have those. Uh, I want to hide the legs, for example. So to hide a component, any component you want, you can click on the component to select it, then right click, and then click Hide. And that hides the component, as you can see. Um, but I want to hide all four legs, so I can do that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click there, right click, and click Hide. And I'll hide that one. And I'll hide that one and I'll hide that one. And then I want to kind of look from a top view and see what's happening here. Let's see if this makes sense to us. All right, so let me move this uh, rail out of the way now and you can take a look at it. So I'll click the Move tool, I'll move this, and we'll click the right arrow. And you see, if you can look there, you can see how those guys are overlapping, right? So that's not gonna work, I can't cut two uh, I can't cut two mortises and have them overlap inside. That's not possible. So what we need to do is we need to cut 45 chamfers on the edge of these mortises so when they're inside of that leg, they fit together. And I'll show you how to do that here. All right, so we're gonna zoom in. So we have to pick a component we wanna go into. Maybe we'll go into this component first. So double click to get into the component. And we'll zoom in a little bit here. So I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna create a line where there isn't one from here to here. There we go. Now I'm going to do P for the push-pull tool. I'm going to click that, and I want this to go down, out of the way. And I want to go down to this edge. You see how it says on edge, outside of active area, a little red dot showed up? So I've clicked that. So that's cool. That's out of the way now. Click this, and I'm going to show you that that's out of the way. I'm going to click uh, outside here. I'm going to click the Move tool. I'll click that, and I've moved that. You see how I cut that edge off there? So the edge of that one's cut off. All right, I want to do the same thing with the other side. I have to go into this component to do it. So double click it to go in to the component to do it. And then I'm going to click L for the line tool. I'm going to draw our same line from there to there. And then I'm going to do the push pull tool. I'll click that and I'm going to push that down to that edge right there. Bam. And let me hit the space bar to get out of that tool and click out here to get out of there. And let me click that piece. Uh, let, let me move it actually. I'll click it. And then you can see as I move that out of the way, now that, that's fixed. So now when these two pieces go together inside of the legs, the mortises won't uh, overlap each other. So that should be pretty straightforward how we do that. Okay. And so these pieces, there's a lot of symmetry here. So when I did this side here, it did that side there. And when I did this side here, it did that side there. So the way to have them all four done is I go here, then I go diagonally to the other side and repeat the process. And that gets all four of them done. So let's rotate this guy around to the opposite corner, which is right here. We'll zoom in just a little bit. And then we're gonna start maybe on this leg. Double click here. 
I got to draw a line. Uh, put the line right across that corner. I'll do the push pull tool. I'll click that and I'll push it down to that edge there. And I'll get out of that tool, get out of that component. Then I'll double click that component to get into it. I'll click line. I'll draw a line from there to there. And then I want to push this triangle down. So P, push pull tool, click that triangle. And I'll push that triangle down to this edge right here. And spacebar to get out of the tool and click there to get out of the component. And it should be done. So if we click this, uh, we move this, I mean, we can do this and we can see that's done. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look if, if it worked with all of them now to verify. Let me see if I can make this a little bit easier for you to see. I'll click this guy and I'll move him out too. There you go. Look at that. So all four of those are done. And I'll put them back together. And then we'll go up here to file and we'll go to, or sorry, edit. And we'll unhide everything. Unhide all. And there's the legs. Now there's another tool that we can use to kind of look at these structures here and that's called view and face style and x-ray so you kind of get an x-ray view of how this goes together and you can see down in there that's pretty cool huh these this tenon goes into this mortise and these guys fit so we can tell that we've done the job accurately if we look at the x-ray tool pretty neat okay so What's uh, left here is to put a tabletop on our piece. Let me get out of the x-ray tool. Now it's time to put the top of this Rubo workbench on. And I told you we we're going to make it out of 2x4s and 4x4s. We've made uh, the legs and the rails out of 4x4s. And we'll make the top out of 2x4s. We'll turn them on edge so that they have more strength. A Rubo is a pretty big stout bench. So I want to start by drawing one 2x4 across here. And of course we'll just copy it moving across. So I'll need the rectangle tool. So R for rectangle tool. I'm just going to start at the corner here and we're going to kind of draw it. See the, the, the drawing gets kind of confused until you get it on a flat plane like the side here. So you can see now we're kind of in the right plane, the right pattern, but now I have to size this thing. So I want you to see the grid that I have here. Or you see what the green shape looks like, that rectangle I've made. So that's basically where I want to put it. But if we look down in the dimensions box, we've got 51 and a half long by five and one eighth of an inch tall. Well, that means the long length is, the first length is the long length, and I want this to be 72 inches long. So I'm going to make a six foot uh, tabletop. So 72 and then comma, and I know a 2x4 is 3.5 inches uh, tall. So 3.5, enter, and that's what it looks like. Now this is just the start of it, of course. Uh, this is a two-dimensional part of the uh, 2x4. We, of course, have to make it three-dimensional. So I'm going to press the space bar to get out of this tool. I'm going to kind of flip around to the other side because no normally I would take the push-pull tool and I would just grab this and I would pull it out to give it... Uh, the thickness that we need. Um, but in this case, I'm actually going to pull the thickness out the other way because with a Rubo bench, the edge of the tabletop should be flush with the edge of the leg. This would allow us to put on a leg vise and allow us to clamp pieces of wood uh, vertically along the edge of the table here. So I'm going to pull it this direction. So I'm going to do P for the push pull tool and I'm going to pull it this way. See, you might might have thought I was going to do this way, but but I'm not. I'm going to pull it this way. So 1.5 inches, that's how thick a 2x4 is, and enter. Now, I know what's happening here. Let me get out of this tool, spacebar. I realize that I have now uh, this board and this board occupying the same space. But we'll get it, we'll, we're going to handle that soon. Um, now, I've already made this uh thing here and this is of course now a new component let's not forget so let's make it a component officially so triple click and then the letter G makes it a component and then enter satisfies it it's now a component now I don't want it, the tabletop to just hang off a hundred percent from that side that would look goofy um, but Rubos typically have more hanging off from one side than the other because that allows us to put tail vices or wagon vices on the side 
and we put a leg vise, for example, on this side. So I'm just going to move this over so it gets about a six inch overhang. So I'm going to type M for move. I'll click here. I'll start moving it this way. And to make sure I stay in the right plane, I'm going to press the arrow, uh, which is the right arrow for the red axis. Maybe that'll help. R, right for red. So the, I'm in the red axis. So I'm going to go over about, you know, wherever. But I'm just going to type six. I want six inches overhang. And that's, that's, that's what it looks like. To me, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click the space bar to get out of the tool. And we'll take a look. I think that's going to look good. That's the right amount of overhang on the right. I just want it bigger than what's on the left. Okay, so now we have this. We have a new component, and it's all in place. Let me orbit around. Don't forget how to use the orbit tool. We have to depress the uh, the mouse or scroll wheel and, and, and use the orbit in that way. So what I want to do is I'm just going to keep copying this and pulling it this way. And that's going to give me my entire tabletop. So I'm going to click it here, and you should remember how to copy and move. So I'm going to click M for move, and I'm going to start bringing it this way. Now, I needed to go along the green axis. You can kind of see that faint dotted line green there. That's one way to kind of help you remember that that's the green axis. And let me do one more thing. If you look down here, you can see this green axis. That's how you know you want to move it that way. So let me get back to the move tool. I'll click it. I'll start moving it this way. So if I can see that I'm on the green axis, it's fine. If I'm not sure, I might just push the arrow key, which that's the left arrow key in this case, to keep it on the green axis. So I'll start moving it over. And remember, in order to copy it, I have to press Control. That copies it. And how far do I want it over? Well, I want it an inch and a half over because it's an inch and a half thick. So 1.5, Enter. And there it is. So I have doubled up my top. Now I could just keep adding these one at a time. That wouldn't be a problem. I'm going to press space bar to get out of this tool. And I could keep adding those one at a time and I would eventually get it done. But what I might do now, which would speed it up, is I might select uh, two of these guys. And then I'll move them as a pair. So I'll click the move tool. I'll click there. I'll move them this way and in the green plane. I'll get to move some distance. I'll press control to copy that. And I know I want these guys moved over about uh, three inches now because it's two of them. So three, I'm typing that in. You can see it in the lower right hand corner uh, where it says distance three and then enter. And there we have it. We've just copied that many. So I'm going to press the space bar to get out of the tool again. I'm going to click over here to deselect those guys. Now I think I'm just going to go ahead and copy four at once. So when I grab this for copy, I want to make sure I'm not accidentally grabbing the leg. So, or sorry, when I'm grabbing to select. So the leg didn't get selected, but what if I went too far like this? You can see suddenly that this leg selected because it's blue. So when grabbing and pulling from the right to the left, remember you just have to get a portion of it and it'll select the whole thing. So if you're having a hard time getting just what you want, you might want to orient this maybe more this way. That will allow you to grab it safely and stay away from the leg. Does that make sense? Okay, so I've got those highlighted. I'm going to select M for move. I'm going to click it once, and I'm going to start pulling it in this direction. I know I need to use the left arrow key. That's going to keep it in this plane. I'll move it down some. I'll press Control to copy that there. And I have four boards. They're an inch and a half wide each, so that makes six inches. So I'll type in six. You'll see it appear in the lower right hand side, six and enter. And there you have it. You, so now our tabletop is halfway done. I'm going to type spacebar to get out. And now I've got to grab the whole lot of them to copy them all. All right, so I'm going to do it. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. Well, I did it, but I'll do it there. And I'll make sure I'm not encroaching on that leg, just on these boards. There we go. They're all selected. And I can see the leg is not selected. And so I'm going to click move. I'm going to start. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to start moving them in the right direction. I'm going to click the, click the green arrow, so I know I'm going the right way. And then I'm going to click Control, which is going to copy them. And so now we have 12 inches worth of boards. So 12, Enter, and bam, there it is. Let me click Space to deselect the tool and click over here in the empty space to deselect those. So there you have it. That's the Rubo. Look at that. Now, a rubo is a bench that typically goes uh, flush, where the bench top goes flush with the edge of the leg. That way, you can put a leg vise here and clamp it. So that's a pretty cool-looking bench. Um, but we have some problems, right? We've got to deal with this overlap. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's not too hard. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take this leg and I'm going to turn this leg at the top into sort of a mortise to push up or into a tenon, I'm sorry, to push up through the top. So I'm going to go into the component of the leg. Watch, see if you can follow what I'm doing here. I'm going double clicking, so I'm in the component of the leg. So anything I do, anything I draw is now attached to the leg. It's not attached anywhere else. Now this line right here, I'm going to draw a line over there. So L for line. I'm going to click right there and move it over to right there. Then I'm going to do P for the push pull tool and I've clicked it there. I'm going to push this leg down. And I've just pushed this portion where I do the line. Now I want it to, I, I could keep pushing forever, but we don't, we don't really want that. We want it to stop right there. So I can be way over here even and see, uh, it says on edge outside active. So I'm on the edge right there that gets it flush with that edge, which is exactly what we want. And I'll click it and there it is. I'm going to press space bar to get out of the tool and I'm going to show you what we did. I'm going to click move to grab this guy and move it down. And you can, you can see what we've done there. We've actually created a, uh, a bit of a tenon on that leg. That's pretty neat, huh? Okay, so it's not done yet, of course, because we have we still have some more fixing to do up here. So I'm going to go back into the leg, go back into the component by double clicking, and I'm going to rotate a little bit here. I want to do the same thing. I want to push this piece back here down too. So line, I'm going to draw a line from there to there, and I'm going to click the P, P for the push tool. I'll grab it, and I want to push this down. So all the way down, and I want it to line up with this guy. I'll click it, and it's lined up with this guy. So now I'm going to press spacebar to get out of the tool. I'll click over here to get out of the component. And let's see if we can take a look at that leg we just made. I'm going to move it down, and I'm going to just move it to right here. And let's take a look at that. Look at that. So we've sort of created a tenon there. That tenon is going to push up through this. This is kind of an easy way to build a mortise and tenon. Uh, we just basically cut these uh, shoulders off here, cut the cheeks off, and we and we have a, a built-in tenon, and we'll have to fix the board up here that it goes into. So let's do that. Um, also, since we made all four of these legs at once, we copied them, moved them, and then rotated them or flipped them about these axes, just by doing one, all four are done. So that's pretty convenient. All right, so now let's take a look at what's left here. Um, the tenon part of this leg and this particular two by four are still occupying the same space. We can't have that, so I've got to put a hole here. Putting a hole here is going to give me an artifact like it did with the mortise down below. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is I'll show you. Now, I want to take this particular 2x4 and I want to push it back maybe to the other side of the tenon. But I have to do that over here too. Uh, push this back to the other side of the tenon. And, but if I do that it's going to move all these at once because all these are attached. So watch. I'm gonna, I have this one selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this one as well. Now these two guys I want them to be different than the other boards that make up the tabletop. So if I right click on it then I could say make unique. And now those are unique. They're unique to each other. And they're unique as in separate from the rest of the tabletop. So if I were to do a push pull on these, it's not going to push the other boards on the tabletop. Let's take a look. I'm going to select that guy. I'm going to hit my push pull tool. I'll click. Whoop, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. I have to go into the component first, right? So double click to get into the component, then push grab this edge or just touch it really and then move over and I don't want it there I want it there on that side and we don't want it too far but if we get to this edge it'll just snap right there and click it and that's it let's zoom back out and I'm gonna hit the space bar to get out of the tool and I'm gonna click out here to get out of that and we'll take a look at what we've got so that worked perfectly now we're gonna to need to do that on the other side Let's get over here and do that. Now these two boards, of course, are already unique, so we just simply have to push them back. So I gotta get into the component. I can get into this one or into this one because they are connected. So I'll go into this component. I'll click P for the push-pull tool, and I'll click that, and I'll start pushing it back. 
Now I'm not holding down that left click button. Remember, all you have to do is click it once and now I'm just moving the mouse. So I can scroll while I'm moving the mouse and I want to move it all the way back to this side of the 2x4. I hope that makes sense right there. And then click it and that puts it there. Now I'll press the space bar to get out of the tool and click out here to get out of the component and that part's done. Now what we have to do is add four short boards in these four spaces and our table is done. Okay, so let's get this oriented so that we can see what we're doing. And I'll zoom in here and we're gonna basically draw a rectangle here and then we're just gonna pull it out to this edge. Now it might look confusing at first as to where the rectangle goes, but if we spend a minute to look at this, I can see that this is a straight line coming down here and then I can see there's an angle change as this comes forward. So I know that the board that I'm gonna draw in here is gonna stop down here. And even if I have it rotated like that so that I can see the whole thing, I can still see this angle change. So you just kinda of have to orient yourself, get used to what you're looking at, and you'll be okay with it. All right, so we're gonna start. We're gonna do R for rectangle. And I can start right down here, and you can see it says end point. I'll click that, and I'll move it up to this corner, and I'll click that. So now I have a two-dimensional rectangle, and I'm going to do P for the push-pull tool. I'll grab that, and I'm going to bring that out. That's going to create that board. Now, I want to make sure I bring it right flush to the ones that are next to it, and SketchUp makes it easy. We just hover over something that we want it to come flush to, and that does it. We could do this side or this side, doesn't matter, and we'll click, and there it is. That was pretty straightforward. Okay, so we're going to do the space bar to get out of the tool. And remember, this is not yet a component, so triple click, oops, triple click, type G, and then enter. Now it's a component. All right, let's see if we can do the same thing over here. We'll take a look at this guy. Zoom in just a little bit. There we go. And then I'll do R for rectangle. And I'll click there, and we'll move it up to this corner and click there. That's our two-dimensional surface. I'll click P for the push-pull. I'll drag it out and I'll put my mouse over here, my cursor here, and click there so it's flush to that edge. I'll press space bar to get out of the tool. I'll triple click. I'll type G to make it a component and enter. See, if you guys are sitting here with me, then I would let you do the next one. So that way I know you uh, know what we're doing here. But you're not, so I'll keep doing them. All right, same thing here. R for rectangle. We'll start here and we'll go to here. That's the two-dimensional version. P for push-pull. We'll pull it out flush with that edge. Space bar to get out of the tool. Trip, uh, triple click. Type G to make it a component and enter. And there's just one left and that's this guy. Get a good view of what's happening. All right, R for the rectangle tool. We'll click there, drag it up here, click again, P for push-pull, and pull it out to the edge right there. Get out of the tool, triple click, G, and enter. All right, let's take a look at that. Pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like when I move a leg. I'll click M for move, and I'm going to move this leg down to, oh, I don't know, about there. And get out of the tool and let's uh, use the orbit and look around look at that so we actually have a mortise there up here and we actually have our tin in here and this is a pretty easy project to make we've actually built this whole thing so that it's simple to make you would probably just glue all of these interior uh, two by fours together and maybe just glue this one on then you'll cut these put them up in place, then you can glue this one on, then you can glue the outer one on. And you don't actually have to go through the trouble of cutting a mortise. So this is a pretty cool way to make a mortise in a tabletop. All right, and I'm, I don't know if I, I've been going back, I've been moving things and going back without telling you, but Control Z returns things to where they were. It's the same as it works with any program that you have. Control Z uh, undoes your last action. So what I did is I clicked the move tool and I move this. Maybe I could click the move tool again and I could move this. So I've done two things. So control Z once puts that back. Control Z a second time puts that back. So that's just a way to put things back in place that, you, uh, that you've done. Kind of undoes your last action there.
Okay, so this looks really good. You know what I think though? I think what I might like to do is have a flat surface here. Now normally we'll, we would do the rectangle tool to outline a perimeter, but I've got to work this, uh, if I want to put a shelf here, I've got to work it around these edges. So in this case, instead of doing the rectangle tool, I'll probably just do, use the line tool and watch what I'm doing here. So I'm going to click L for line and I'm just going to start here and I'll move that to here and I'll come up to this point here. Now the line's still active. I'm going to rotate around. I'll click here. I'll click here. I'll click here. Now I'll rotate around again. I'll click here and here and here and here and we'll orbit around a little bit more. I'll click here and here and here and there. And look at that. What that's done is kind of given me a two-dimensional surface of a shelf. I'll click the push pull tool, I'll grab it, and I'll just drag it up. Um, I think we'll want this shelf uh, probably to be made out of plywood, which is 0.75. You can see on the right side, I've typed that in, inches thick, and then enter. And there it is. So we have a plywood shelf. I press the space bar to get out of that tool. And once again, we've made a new component. So triple click, type G to make it a component, and enter. And that's it. So let's take a look at it. Since what we did is we basically walked our drawing around all of these corners. Because if you put a shelf here, obviously you can't have the shelf occupy the same space as this. So it's like each of the corners has to be notched. But let's look at it. And I'll move it out here. And you can see that it is, in fact, notched. Pretty cool. Control Z puts it back in place. Spacebar takes it out of the tool. And so that's it. So there's your Rubo. This project is, is uh, we're going to consider this project done, basically. Uh, these up here are just different views you could look at the project in. Some different perspective views, like a head-on view, a top view, um, a, and then, you know, the perspective view. That's a good view. I like that one. Uh, but so this project is all complete. I'm not going to take the time to show you how to put the... Uh, the skin on like to make it wood grain or anything I did that in the first video maybe go back and have a look at it this video is already really pretty long uh, so that's it I hope you guys enjoyed the project I hope you learned from it if you would like to learn uh, some more if you'd like to see some more sketchups uh, just let me know in the comments down below if you have specific questions um, ask them in the comments sometimes there's other sketchup experts in here and they might even be able to help and answer them before I can get back around to them and I do need to say thank you to my daughter Sai she's my young daughter she's 15 and she is actually the person who learned SketchUp two years ago she's the one in the family who has mastered it and she does all of our plans and for this particular project I actually had her r quickly teach me how to do this before I made the video to show you guys so that's that's how we get everything done here when it comes to SketchUp we give it to her so that's it have a good day thanks for watching